continue now with our coverage um, of the Arches funeral service, our build-up to it. It's uh, set to begin at 10 o'clock in Cape Town this morning. The Arch being lauded as a spiritual leader who understood and embraced different cultures and denominations. He used the pulpit to promote cultural diversity and beliefs over the years and was actually a big supporter of various artists working in different cultures. Joining us now to help us understand how the Arch managed to integrate different cultures is political commentator Professor Patika Ntuli, who joins us via our video link this morning. Prof, it's wonderful to have you on the program this morning in a week that has really been a celebration of the life of the Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. Prof, how do we begin to pay tribute to a man like this? I'll, I'll begin to pay tribute to a man like this with a poem I wrote for him. The smile and laughter that capture the world are gone, but they live in our bleeding hearts. Our memories dance at every thought. You walk amongst us, carry the message of the All High, served him, aged by your love for us. It was you who said, let us be a rainbow nation, one diversity, one in love, away from yesterday's of hate and bigotry. Madiba said, because you wore a dress, he cannot listen to you. You love together. That's a memory I carry of you too. Your chairs at the TRC spoke to me louder than the host of prayers. Palestine. They killed children in Ramallah and in Geelong. The trumpet of your conscience would not let you be silenced. Consistent critic of greed and corruption and intolerance. Your God would not allow you to keep your mouth shut. For this and more, we love you. Because you knew why you were a Christian, who was an African, who knew love. For this too, we love you. Rest in peace, Arch. Yeah. Breathtaking, Prof. Thank you so much for, for giving us that poem here as we continue to pay tribute to the Arch as well on Newsroom Channel 405. You know, one of the things that you talked about there was um, reminding me of a quote. I've got this list of quotes from the Arch that I've been referring to all week, where he talks about, you know, his, his constant criticism of the ANC government over the past, uh, the last decade or so. And he says, you know, I wish I could shut up, but I can't. <laughs> he had a very, 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 very great, uh, you know, sense of, uh, uh, you know, humor. Mm. And uh, he just uh, laughed. What I really loved about him is that he was actually himself, he was part of that generation of older people who still were rooted in uh, their own cultures, who were rooted into their own communities. Like earlier on, people were saying in Villagas Street, you know, sharing food and, and this. These were the red uh, uh, in a generation of, uh, uh, you know, people. But I can't say anything about uh, Bishop Tutu without saying something about Beas Nodier, who was a very powerful uh, you know, Christian, heading the brother bond, but also when the trumpet of conscience uh, you know, blew, he said, not in my name. Mm. And that's exactly uh, what uh, you know, Tutu will also say, that not in his name anything that offends the people, oppresses the people, deny uh, the people their rights of who they are. Mm not afraid to criticize where he saw injustice. It, it didn't matter where that injustice stemmed from. Even the church that he loved so much, he was very clear about his own stance when it came to particularly the LGBTIQ plus community. Uh, oh yes, I mean, on every, uh, you know, you know issues, even during the time of uh, you know, fee, fees must fall when uh, things were kept intense. He had his voice, uh, 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 you know, there. And uh, yeah, however close he may be with the people, uh, but he would still tell them if they were wrong. He would tell Madiba uh, where Madiba was, uh, you know, straying, and uh, 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 he would offer that advice. That's why, uh, with his dress, he did very well for Madiba. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Professor Ntuli, you know, uh, part of the Archer's final wishes um, in terms of how he wanted to be laid to rest. Uh, this week we saw that very simple pine coffin 
arriving on the steps of St. George's Cathedral where he's being laid to rest. And actually, it, it's part of his final wishes, which were incredibly clear in that he said he wanted, he actually wanted the cheapest coffin available for him to be laid to rest. He said he wanted no lavish spending, nothing ostentatious, um, only one bouquet of carnations will be in the church today as he be, is being laid to rest. Um, and the, uh, that, that bouquet of carnations is, is to be provided by his family. That simplicity continues in terms of the military rights that will be afforded to the arch. He's been afforded a Category 1 special official funeral. It comes with a number of military rights, which he has also refused. What was he saying in these final wishes of how he wanted to be laid to rest? Uh, Abidu was demonstrating his uh, kind of utter humility. That is part and parcel of uh, the people. He should not be treated, in a sense, even in his last days, different from how ordinary you know, people uh, uh, you, know, you are. Because here in the country, we take ourselves so seriously because we are rich, because we are educated, because we have got a particular you know, status. I think it's breaking up a, a, a statement to say, whoever you are, whatever your station in life is, you deserve you know, to be loved and you deserve to, uh, 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 you know, to be very humble, and that's what he's, te mm. he's, he's teaching us mm. to he, follow. He's, he's surely also making some kind of final comment about the lavishness in general, perhaps even of, of, our, of our government, of our, of our current leaders. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, definitely. I mean, in South Africa, yeah, you get the best watch, uh, 30,000 watch you know, up on your, uh, your hand. The funerals are absolutely lavish. And after the funeral, you have to spend uh, tens and thousands of uh, uh, rents on, uh, uh, I mean, on, after, uh, on after tears. And the people who actually do this, uh, uh, you know, this thing are the people who have got uh, you know, the money, much of the money, which is absolutely obviously siphoned even from the state. Mm. And he wasn't very, very, very pleased and happy about it. That's why in the poem I had made mention that uh, he had always spoken very critically of uh, those uh, people who are greedy and those people who are uh, you know, corrupt, who forget what it took us to, uh, to be uh, liberated. Mm. How many massacres have been, how many deaths in detention, how many uh, you know, people being moved you know, away you know, from uh, you know, their land. So he was making up that statement for us to, you know, to reflect. Yeah. Mm. Uh, his uh, uh, final wish is his ultimate sermon mm. Mm. of Absolutely. humility and of justice. Uh, Prof, you know, we've been talking a lot about the archer's incredible humor, his incredible strength, even though he was someone who lived through some of the darkest times in our country's history. If you were in the archer's orbit, the, the rainbow nation that he talked about, it, it seemed possible when at all other times it, it does feel impossible in our country sometimes. But in his orbit, these things did seem possible. Where did that come from? Given the difficult life that he himself had, given what he witnessed firsthand in our own fight for democracy as a country, where did that joy, that spirit come from? You can also even link that uh, with what uh, is said mostly about Madiba for 27 years and coming out still smiling. Mm. I said earlier on that there is a generation of uh, people that were rooted in their culture, that were rooted in the simple principles of uh, 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 Ubuntu. And that's what uh, really marked. They said to themselves, this is what I'm going to do. I think the person who said it even far much more clearer than anybody else was Robert Mangali Sosobukwe uh, uh, in his organization when he said, serve, suffer, sacrifice. Hmm. Not serve, corrupt, loot, and all. So he is therefore that part of that uh, in the generation uh, that was prepared to serve the people, suffer, which they actually did very considerably, and, and, and to sacrifice. Right now he's sacrificing uh, the privileges that is actually being given so that uh, he can be just like anybody 
uh, 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 anyone else, which reflects his own inner spirit of why he became, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a Christian. He became a Christian who set himself to be Christ-like. Mm. Professor Patika and Tuli, let me thank you for your time this morning on what is an incredible moment for our country as we lay to rest one of the giants of South Africa's history. Professor Patika and Tuli is a political uh, commentator, and that poem we heard from the prof at the beginning of that interview is certainly one we're going to replay for you here on the channel.